going to Home Depot and finding survival items? Let's check it out. One of my favorite things to do is to walk into a store and just find survival items just to see what I could get in an emergency. You know, I find myself out on the road, I need some supplies, and I'm not at home and something happens. Uh, we've done this a few times going to different places. Uh, it's really a great exercise whether you buy the items or not, but just to go through and see what they do carry. <laughs> you could find yourself you know, stranded and that's the place that you end up buying things. We went to Home Depot, had no plan really except just to find the items that we could get. I mean, we wanted some kind of container to put things in to be able to carry them. Uh, but otherwise, you know, we just went. <laughs> and it was really uh, surprising how much stuff Home Depot had. But we just go around, pick things up. Um, you know, there are some elements though that you've got to be careful of. One is to stick to things that are vital because you are going to be carrying them. Uh, one thing that we found was we would see something and go, hey, that might be something good. That might be something good. You know, you could buy the whole store and use it <laughs> to build a house or a shelter or whatever. But you have to focus on survival. And so we went through and just bought a lot of different items. And so this is just taking you through the store and then we're gonna evaluate all the things that we did pick up. Now when it comes to flashlights, there's a ton of different options and we probably wanna pick up different ones. Um, there's a number of headlamps, but we're gonna get this 400 lumen set up. Let me get these coast. These are double uh, A batteries and there's two 80 lumens each. Then, happen to spot this this is an energizer you actually is a charger and uh, it's a lantern as well so that way we can get a lot more capability and I can charge my lights I can charge my phone for that so we're probably going to go ahead and get this again light is your number one security tool so you really want to have enough light and we've got extra batteries now we have some rain suits down here two-piece rain suits uh, they are bright yellow but you know that way you can see if you need to but if you don't want to be seen Right over here, they just have some clear plastic ponchos. These are cheap, but uh, I think that could be a good option if you needed it and you needed to stay hidden. But it uh, looks like they've got a number of different ones. You even have a blue color as well. We're gonna go ahead and get the two-piece rain suit and then we're gonna get this. Cleanliness is next to godliness. <laughs> Care cord, not really hair cord, but good cordage. We also wanna get some kind of Rope. Rope would be great to have for the sturdier. And tent stakes. I always use tent stakes, especially with a tarp. Guys, to be honest, I mean, what a haul. I mean, this was really surprising how much stuff that we were able to come up with. I mean, I knew that we were at a home improvement store and there would be things there where we could use it, especially their outdoor sections. Uh, but not having any kind of camping area, uh, but mainly just outside construction or in the house, uh, it really surprised me. And we were finding some stuff that I just had no idea was there. And that's one of the big things about going to these stores and just spotting stuff that you could probably pick up later. Things that you're going to need, things that you could use. And I just think it's a good exercise to do if you're a prepper. Now, the first thing that we considered is a way to carry the items that we needed. And typically in a hardware store, uh, even like Harbor Freight, uh, we just got a tool bag. And that's what I was looking for, just a standard tool bag. I didn't know that I would find a tool backpack. <laughs> and this is actually, was pretty surprising. 
but it's a really sturdy backpack has nice treading underneath uh, so it's going to hold up well and uh, it is a little heavy because of that but this is made to carry tools so you really got a lot of strength with this pack a lot of different pockets on it uh, it just really kind of surprised me actually and i think these are about 56 dollars or something I, i'm not positive uh, they only had one has nice padding in the back i mean this is actually a fairly decent backpack nice straps but um i was really surprised and so this is the base for what we put together and the rule of three is you have three hours that you're going to live in harsh conditions especially extreme cold wet conditions even super hot conditions so having some kind of shelter is top priority uh, first off i like to get some kind of tarp and i knew they'd have a tarp eyelets it's a pretty decent tarp uh, and this can make an excellent shelter it can make a ground cover uh, a number of different things you can do with a tarp uh, they're heavy but they're really useful make a tent you can do whatever but also one thing that i always like are heavy meal trash bags they're really easy these are very improvisable especially with shelter i mean you can set this up uh, as a tarp sort of and, and a cover a rain cover i mean you can do a ton of things with these and so we keep these in all of our bags so when i saw this big pack in fact there were two of them uh, two of these rolls uh, you know and that's probably more definitely than i want to carry but if i'm going somewhere and picking up some things i definitely want to get some of these heavy meal trash bags also which really shocked me is they had tent stakes uh, and they had different kinds of tent stakes and so i just picked these because they're very durable they're very easy to use and with the eyelets that we have uh, or we can take this para-esque cord it's not really paracord they didn't have the 550 cord but some kind of cordage and here even the rope i can tie off in fact we've done a whole video on making shelters out of tarps and having some kind of tent stakes are vital really and I, we keep these in all of our packs as well uh, a neat little improvised shelter that really works well now last but not least in this section are some kind of rain gear now this is a two-piece rain suit not too bad i mean it's disposable but you can definitely keep the elements down but one problem with this is it is a bright yellow color uh, they had a bright blue as well which might have been a little bit better but you may want to be seen and so this is definitely something that you might consider uh, but i also got one of the clear ponchos now this is really flimsy i mean it's going to keep the rain off for a couple of days maybe but uh, it has a hood with it and it's just a standard poncho and you could put this over your gear uh, as well so this is really cheap and so i got this now when i walked in the door i saw the water uh, water stacked up water is vital three days without water that's all you can live um, and so having some kind of water and these are easy to get they're usually up front which these were uh, this is not going to be very portable so you want to split this up with your group or having many people that you have with you to be able to carry this but it is water and it can get you through especially in a three-day pack uh, this is actually a luxury and I saw this and I was kind of surprised uh, they have a lot of water filter systems that attach to faucets but I had no idea we would have any kind of filtration system that we could use this is big I mean it, it's going to be large it says 30 cup capacity and uh, it has a little spout with it this is the zero water uh, I've actually been hearing some things about these so when I saw it I was kind of back and forth about buying it i was like well that's not something you're going to carry on a three-day hike and yet if you dump the water out you could attach this to your pack guys if you have no way to filter water water is vital it's vital to survival and so this may be something that you just have to add if you don't have one of the smaller type filters so you could have a katadyne hiker pro or a sawyer mini or whatever at home but if you don't have it with you it's no good and so having some water available is great but having a way to filter water especially over a longer period of time and again these are at home depot so if you, you're looking for a water system i mean i think this was like fifty dollars uh, you'll have to look i'm just quoting all things we were buying them so fast i don't really have prices and that's not the purpose for this video now i knew that home depot typically they have a lot of lights there there is a huge array all kind of different lights coast a number of different ones actually fairly decent lights uh, this is a headlamp and this is the number one light that i would get because it's, it gives you hands free you can attach it you can see really well and this is one of the energizer lights 
Uh, one thing about this one in particular, they had different ones. Uh, but this was 400 lumens. It was the top of the list. It was a little more expensive than the 100 lumen light. But uh, you can, again, and you can change the color. I mean, there's a lot of cool things about this light. And so it gives you all kind of different colors and different modes. And so to me, this is a big one. And it is movable. You can move this around. The headband has a rubberized coating inside. This is going to be very comfortable. And so I was really pleased to find this one, but there were a lot of others. But headlamp would be the first choice for me if I only had one. Uh, another find are these little lights. And these are only 80 lumens. Uh, and they come with batteries and they come with double A batteries. Now this is kind of a different thing. And I, I debated on getting this one. There was another one. Uh, but what I like about this is not only does it have light... Uh, and you can fold this up. You can use the light underneath. I mean, it gives you some different options. It can be used as a lantern. And uh, I'm going to turn this off because it's so bright. But um, And in here, we have a moonlight setting. And so that's the other button. So if you want to conserve your battery life, you can just turn this on. And this section right here allows this to really glow. It gives you an ambient light. And so this is something that if you want to conserve it. But this is made by Energizer. Uh, but I'll tell you, the, the main reason that I picked this up is that it has a port in the back and you can use that to charge your phone, charge different items. So that just gives you another capability. And also got a couple of chem sticks. Uh, these are great. Of course, you just shake them up and you break them and they will last for hours. Uh, these are great lights and we use these in different ways. One thing you can do, and I think it comes with a lanyard is you can attach a lanyard to this and swing it around your head and it makes a bright circle. So if somebody's looking for you, uh, you can attach this to your pack to be seen. But then if you want somebody, if you're looking, rescuers are looking for you, you can spin that around. And this will go for eight hours. So it does have a lot of uh, life in these small little uh, battery-free light sticks. Then while we were there, I picked up some double A's, triple A's, CR123 lithium batteries, and they had the 2032 batteries. These are what most of your scopes and your optics use. So there's a six pack. They were fairly reasonable. Uh, batteries typically are not cheap, especially if you get good ones. And I really prefer Duracell uh, for a number of reasons. We've tested these even against Energizer. And Duracell seems to hold up the best. So I try to get Duracell where I can. But Energizer still make good quality batteries. Fire starting. Fire starting is important. Uh, you can cook your food. It can boil your water. It gives you light and it keeps predators away. Uh, so I really like the ability to create fire. Man has been building fires from the beginning and keeping warm is a really important part of this as well. Uh, so when we first walked around, I was looking for lighters. And so in the barbecue section, of course, they have these. Uh, and this is kind of nice because it gets your hand away from where you're lighting that flame. And so they had a two-pack. Uh, these are around. You find these all the time. So that was a great find right there. I thought we would find those. Uh, I really thought we might find some lighters at the front counter, just some small little Bic lighters, but we didn't see any. And of course, after we'd went shopping, we had so much stuff. Another thing that really surprised me, and this is actually a good find. Uh, here we have some weatherproof matches. Uh, these are lifeboat matches, and we've done some reviews with these. This will burn for over 25 seconds. And this material, you can actually take these, dip them in water, pull them back out, and they'll relight. Uh, and so these are really cool matches. Uh, they're typically fairly expensive, but we got a whole box. And I mean, we got about um, three times this much in the box. And so these are all sealed. And of course, we open these up. But to me, if you're at Home Depot and you come across these weatherproof matches, buy them. <laughs> because these things are awesome. Uh, and so that is our fire starting, but we did find some fatwood. Uh, this is probably, you know, to light fires for smokers or things like that uh, if you're cooking food. But fatwood is great, and having a fire tender, I really like to have. So you can get the shavings down really thin, and this just gives you some wood to be able to start that. So really, this is more tender. And then we found a saw, and this is a Fiskars. It's a, um, a nice big saw. It folds up. Uh, so uh, I was really glad to find this, and that way we can saw the wood. They did have a hatchet. Uh, we decided not to get it since we got the saw, but a hatchet also works well. 
But um, having a way to cut some wood, of course, if you're in the woods, a lot of times there's a lot of debris laying around that you can light. But having some kind of fire kit makes it nice. This is a rather large fire kit for what we typically do, but beggars can't be choosers. And if we happen to be at a Home Depot, this is gonna give us a head start. And again, you may not carry this whole pack in your backpack. And if you have a group, you can split it up with them. But we wouldn't go far without some duct tape and Gorilla Tape really works well. Uh, and this is, I believe the black version. So uh, duct tape or Gorilla Tape or something that really holds up it's strong because you can do repairs with this. You can do about anything with duct tape. And so we wanted to grab a roll of this. Uh, sometimes at Home Depot, they'll have the little small duct tapes that are wrapped around a corrugated piece of plastic that make them really flat. One thing you can do with this is to compress this down and then you can still use it uh, or you can take the duct tape off and put it around a credit card and that way you can continue to use it without having the big roll. But the big roll is what we got. Also, we just got some wire and there was all kind of different wire there. And so this gives us some more ability to be able to tie things off, even attach our tarp. I mean, a number of things. You can always use wire to repair things. So having a little bit of wire really comes in handy. And then these two together make it a team. Now for tools. Uh, found a pocket knife. This is a Husky. Not anything. It's got the uh, back lock on it. Uh, it's not the liner lock. Tanto blade. Fairly inexpensive. Has a nice pocket clip on it, but it's pretty sturdy. And so just for regular task, uh, having a small little knife is good, especially for detailed work and so uh, or feathering if you want to do that with when you're making your fire. Uh, but knife, self-explanatory. Uh, now, I really like pry bars and they had a ton of different choices. Uh, larger ones, smaller ones, different ones. I like the shape of this one. It is from DeWalt and it does have a nail puller, but you can get this and use it for leverage. And that's one thing, especially if you're trying to get somebody out of a car or somebody's trapped under something, typically you can use a good pry bar. The longer the bar, the more leverage you're going to get, but also the longer it is to put in your pack. So I like to have a small pry bar. There are just so many uses to this. And then we have a machete, <laughs> and this can definitely be used for self-defense. Uh, it is a Gerber. It has a nice rubberized handle on it, has a sawtooth at the top. Here we have a little protective tip. Uh, and we can use this to cut things uh, very similar to our saw, but, uh, you know, using it for different purposes, maybe even building shelter or whatever if you need to. And it does come with a nice sheath. So we decided to add this uh, maybe with the saw. I might have used a hatchet, but I do like this for self-defense and it does give you some kind of a capability. But now one thing that kind of surprised me, I have bought multi-tools at Lowe's and Home Depot. Uh, a lot of times they'll have them up front and there'll be a, a counter with them, different type multi-tools. Uh, in fact, I bought a nice Gerber multi-tool uh, one time, a suspension, but I didn't see them. I'm sure that they're somewhere, but again, we went through so much stuff. There are things that we missed or might've missed and so a multi-tool would be a great option. And to be honest with you, a pair of pliers would have been good. Some large channel-like type pliers and, you know, maybe a couple of screwdrivers. But overall, these are our tools. Now, this is more towards safety. Of course, obviously gloves. You want to keep your hands uh, as intact as possible. There was a bazillion choices of work gloves. Uh, these are very comfortable leather gloves. And then we have some synthetic gloves as well with rubberized coatings. Uh, they did have tons of nitrile gloves. You name it, they had all kind of work gloves. So finding the right gloves. Plus, you might need to keep your hands warm if it's cold weather, and this will help. Uh, it's not as good as insulated, but it definitely gives you some protection. Also, safety glasses. Uh, you know, guys, you know, you may have your sunglasses with you. You may not. Uh, during the day, you have your sunglasses. Uh, during the evening, if you need something, you can wear these, especially in some situations where there's a lot of debris flying around or things happening when you're cutting wood, things like that. You don't want to get a splinter in your eye. And so being able to protect your eyesight. And this is not necessary, really, but, you know, this is earplugs in case you are in an area uh, where, you know, there's a lot of shooting or the noise is loud or you just want to have some earplugs to protect your ears. And then this is one thing nobody wants to look at, <laughs> but we have a, just a small little respirator. It's a 3M. Uh, this is mainly for dust. I mean, this is mainly if you're in an area, let's say where there's a building that's fallen, there's a lot of dust. Uh, it's just a lot. You're out somewhere where it's kind of arid uh, and you want to protect your breathing. 
um, mask. And so we just went ahead and picked this up. This is more towards safety. And guys, hygiene is important. So we wanted to get some hand sanitizer and they had them there. This will keep you clean. One thing that I would have liked to have found were some baby wipes or just wet wipes. Those are great to keep you clean, wipe things down, uh, even clean your utensils if you happen to have something you're eating. So uh, hand sanitizer or some way to keep clean to me is, is important because you need to keep that hygiene up. And bug spray, especially in the spring, summer, uh, first part of fall, having bug spray, you don't want to get eaten alive with bugs. Uh, the one downside with bug spray is that if you're hiding somewhere or you know, you're trying to avoid uh, people or whatever, you don't want to have that smell. But definitely having a small thing of bug spray, this was actually the smallest that they had. I like to keep one of the smaller ones. But, you know, again, this is what they had. All right, guys, we got everything in the pack, at least a sample thereof. Um, but everything, honestly, except for uh, the water filtration system, uh, we could attach that somehow and just carry it separately. Uh, we did have the machete that we're going to put on our belt because it does have a belt loop, so you don't really need that. I'm sure you could attach this somehow to the pack. But everything is stuffed in here. Uh, the firewood we split up and put about a third of it in here. Um, and the water bottles, obviously there's a whole lot. We did put two in here. And it's according if you have a vi bicycle or some way to move things. You may even have a little cart. And so you can put those things in there. But at least having most of the essentials that we need. So uh, up front, I just have the um, headlamp. And so I can keep it up front in case I need it. And then here in the front pouch, you can see we've just got everything packed in there. There's really cool little sections. We've got our lights in there, the knife, the firewood, our gloves. Here on this side, we have all of our batteries. I just stuffed them all in there, even in the packs. I could take those out of the packs and make these smaller. And so that could be an option as well. Uh, one thing too is there are some different sections on the side here that we might be able to put some other items, but uh, that's, that's just extra room. And there is a small little sleeve here. And there are some different keepers on here uh, where you can attach things. So, you know, you can attach stuff to the outside of the pack if you needed to. And then of course our water bottles here. Uh, we did have a pretty cool uh, system inside uh, for organization, but with these two water bottles, that's all I could get in here. And water is vital. So I would probably put more water bottles in here as well. Now we have this little hard case. This is perfect for glasses. Uh, and so I took both pair of safety glasses and my ear protection and just threw it in there. And that's gonna protect those from getting broken. These zippers aren't too bad either. And they have that little curve to them. Uh, and then here at the top, this is our main compartment. I mean, everything's stuffed in here. There's just no way around it. But uh, we have all of the different things. I would like to see a smaller hand sanitizer. That would have made it nice. Uh, but everything, tarp, um, just all the tools. There are places back here to put them. Duct tape. And uh, we have our cordage. We even have that lantern down in the bottom here if we need it. And then here, even on the front pouch, there are places to put different things and even here in the bottom. So just gave us a lot of different room, but honestly, we had at least a sample of everything. So we did have to split up a few things. One was all the trash bags. I mean, we didn't need that many trash bags. We could put probably half of the one roll in here if we wanted to put it at the bottom. Uh, but then also the matches, we had to split those up because we had a lot of boxes. And then uh, the water, obviously, we couldn't put that in there. But once we attach this together with the cordage that we have, we could possibly take that uh, filter system and just attach it to the pack. Tell you what though, guys, this is gonna be a heavy pack. And so you can trim this down if you need to and take some of the items that you don't think you might need. But overall, I feel like it was a very successful trip. I think we got a lot of things that we could use. And so this backpack really set the whole thing in motion. Uh, because everything really can fit in here and you know how many times do you see a backpack at Lowe's <laughs> and so great and sturdy and sturdy I mean really heavy duty I love this bottom part uh, it's going to be a little heavier but it'll definitely keep your tools and your gear put in one place and again I really appreciate Sarah Mack for helping out uh, she led the way and gave me a lot of ideas as well so again guys just going to different stores looking around to see what items you would need in a survival situation if you were caught out on the road or if you're at home and you go wow I need this and this and things are starting to look pretty bad <laughs> run up there pick up the things you need uh, guys not every store is gonna have things but some are better than others 
But the big thing is, you may be stuck at a gas station and that may be the place that you need to pick up as many items as you can. So it gives you just an exercise to be able to look around. Again, you don't have to even spend money. Just look around, see what survival items are there uh, if you find yourself in serious need. And I'll tell you, we really enjoyed putting this video together and we have some more coming up. Again, just to give you guys ideas of what to look for if you find yourself in bad straits. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. Having some kind of fire kit. <laughs> Bloopers. <laughs>